I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In the previous video, we created some static LOVs, lists of values, and dynamic LOVs. We're going to take a look at how data gets added to the static or the dynamic LOV. If it's a static LOV, the word static indicates you do not expect this to change over time. However, if something does need to be changed, an addition, that has to be done by the developer. It cannot be done by a regular end user. So with the dynamic LOV, you can allow users to maintain the data by adding new options to a list. We'll also take a look at the inconsistency of data already in the animals table and how we might deal with that. First, by correcting what's already in the data table and then providing consistent entry through the form. So I'm going to log in to Oracle Apex as the developer. Logging in to Apex. Going into Application Builder, Daily Operations, our application. And I'm going to run the application. First time in, I have to log in and look at my report of animals and then go to the form. So I have a drop down list for category. I'll deal later with the fact that we have the word dog entered when in fact our choices are now canine, feline, and so on. But let's look at adult size. I see what my options are, and I can leave it blank, but I would like to be more explicit and simply put unknown if we don't know what the adult size would be on a particular animal. And I also want to look at status. Status is a dynamic LOV. So how are we going to get data if we want to change the drop-down list for adult size? How are we going to change the list for status? I want to edit the application so I can come here or I could click on the tab up here. I need to go to shared components. I'm now going to deal with adult size. It's a static LOV, so only a developer such as Carlo Mora 
can come in and make a change to the list. I'll go into the tool for list of values and I'll go to size. So this is currently what we have here. And let's say that I want to add a row. So I'm going to click on add row. And notice we have a column for sequence, which would be the sequence in which the items are listed in the drop-down list. So I'm going to add six here because I want unknown to be the last option. Type that in, and then the value stored is actually UN. Don't confuse this sequence, which is simply the order in which something is listed, with the sequence we have talked about in earlier videos, a special feature in Oracle that provides unique values for each row added to a table. That's a sequence. So two different, totally different meanings for the word sequence. I'll apply changes. I'll come back to my form. I can do that by coming back to this tab. Now if I look at the adult size options, I don't see unknown. I need to do a refresh. So I do a refresh and then I look at the adult size and it's a little off the screen. Let me drag this up. I see unknown as an option. So a static LOV, you can add another option, but the developer has to do it, one of the developers. If we have a dynamic LOV, we can allow users to maintain that list by adding options. Deleting options is a whole nother issue and we may not get to that in this series. Feel free to post a question if you have one. But what I want to do now is if I come back to uh, Home and go to SQL Workshop and Object Browser, I see I have these two lookup tables. Those lookup tables are providing the lists that we see in the drop-down list for breed and for status. So if I click on status, lookup, and click on the data, I see that these are my options. So what I want to do is create a form, and just like I did for animals, and allow users to add to this. So I'll go to Application Builder, back to my application, and I want to create a page. I'll create a form. I'll do a report with form and click Next. The numbers that you see here are probably different than what you have. I come in and out of Apex and make things and drop things. So your numbers do not have to match what I have, but I need to fill in the report page name and the form page name. Then I'll click Next. I'll create a navigation item. I'll select the table, which is status lookup. I want the two columns in the report, ID and status, in this progress timeline we're in the form. I will select my primary key, status ID, and create. I can save that and run that. So as a report, we see the ID and the options for status. If I want to edit one of these, I can click here to edit that. I can cancel, come back to the report, and I want to add something. So I'll do a create. So in this case, I want to add the category deceased and create that. And I now see that as one of the options. If I come over to list of animals and go into the form, I can do it for an existing record rather than create, and come down to status, I see that deceased is one of the options. So having the form that I see over here in the menu area allows the users to modify the list of items in that lookup table.
The one other thing I want to do in this video is deal with data inconsistency, what already exists and how we can prevent that through data entry in a form. So I'm going to go to the application down below in the designer bar. I'm going to go to SQL Workshop. I'm going to go to Object Browser. And I want to look at color in animals. So when I look at color, what I see is inconsistency in case. Sometimes we start the word with a capital letter, sometimes we don't. So I want to make all of that consistent. The first thing I'll do is standardize how we have the data that's already in the table. And I'll do that using an SQL command. So coming back to SQL Workshop, looking at the options, I will do the SQL command. I'll do a single command. I'll pause the video while I type this in. This update command will set the column, the data in the column primary underscore color to lowercase text. We're using the lower function. Let me just mention that I'm not using a where clause here because I do want the change to occur in any row in the primary color column. But be very careful about using an update command without a where clause. You almost always want to control which rows are affected. So let's run this. And it says 51 rows updated. I'll go back to SQL Workshop Object Browser and Animals and look at the data. And now in the color column, everything is all lowercase. Now, what I need to do is come back to the form and have that occur whenever somebody types in a color. Regardless of how they type it in, it'll store as lowercase. So I'll run the application, go to list of animals, go to the animal entry form. Now we see for this particular dog, the primary color is in lowercase black. So let me illustrate why this is a problem still, because I could type in black and come down here and apply that change, and now I see this in uppercase. So I don't want to allow users to do that. So let me get back to the form, clicking on the edit option, and let me edit page five, which is for the form. And I want to right click over on the left hand side, right click on the page item primary color, and I want to add a computation. Over on the right hand side for this computation, first thing, execution. I want to change that to after submit. So let me scroll down so you see that option in the drop down. After submit. I want to change this to SQL expression because it probably wasn't that before I came in and edited. Then I want to type in my computation. And then I'm going to click out of that box to make sure I don't have an error message. And I do have a warning, so let me see what the warning is. I've got an invalid character. So I removed the semicolon, which I tend to put at the end of every SQL command, and did a check, and it says it's valid. So let's try it. Do a save and run that page. Actually, I need to go back to the report and come in on an existing record, which is where we have black. And I'm going to type that in again and save that change. And now I see that it stored it as lowercase black. So now we allow people to type in in upper and lowercase, but it will be stored only in lowercase for data consistency. See you in the next video.